are going to invite the next speaker. This gentleman is the internationally renowned strategist, economist, consultant, and a CEO executive coach who has worked for government of Dubai and Abu Dhabi for more than 15 years and working in 18 different countries representing Dubai and Abu Dhabi in economic modeling, strategic planning, and conducting executive coaching. And he's also a highly reputed senior government advisor for Dubai and Abu Dhabi with massive hands-on proven experience. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, please uh, invite Dr. Udaya Indraratna to the podium. Thank you everyone, academics, uh, ministers and all distinguished guests and uh, thank you very much for the invitation. Um, there are few people that I wish to thank. I came to Sri Lanka for 36 years studying and working so um, there have been few people that I must uh, mention here the, who brought me to Sri Lanka. Uh, the first uh, person that who insists I come to Sri Lanka is my best friend. Um, the current commander of Sri Lankan Army, um, General Shavendra Silva, who insisted me coming to Sri Lanka. Uh, he's my friend from my New York days. I must thank today Professor Sudanta Lienage, my childhood friend, and we studied together, and his lady wife, um, uh, Janita Lienage, to invite me here. We were talking about knowledge leadership, and that was the theme. I want to discuss what is the knowledge leadership means. We learn there are at least five levels of economic maturation as a leadership. The very first level we call agrarian, which means the leadership maturity level is to feed its people. Second is natural resources maturity, which they are able to uh, get oil or mineral from the ground and manage the economy. Sorry. The third level is manufacturing, which is manufacturing or assembly capability hub. The fourth is a service economy maturity and to make service hub. The last we call unity leadership is called a knowledge economy and global competitive leadership. So what happens is if you look at any leader, if they come here only, they know all that. So we definitely need uh, that level of leader and I very much say uh, Mr. Kota Bairajivaksha is a very much uh, knowledge economy uh, leader that we have in hand and we are so uh, happy to uh, uh, have him as our next president. If you look at Sri Lanka, there are about 360,000 childbirth in Sri Lanka. What happened is only about 28,900 or 29,000 students goes to university. That is about 8% output. 92% of our children do not get such an opportunity to go to university. Now, I made a point to break this down at what point they drop out. So, at O levels, at A levels, but real uh, sadness here is 163,000 students pass advanced level. Out of that, only 30,000 could go to universities. So, what we are saying is almost 330,000 of our children born in Sri Lanka do not have a, a skillful education. I look at this in more perspective manner. If you look at on your left, so, Sri Lanka has 12% university entrance that include 8% university which is here and 4% private university which is 12. And vocational training allow us 22% although they are not world class. So, 34% of our student has an opportunity to go to, the, to get university or vocational training. 
what that means 66% of our children do not have the opportunity to get a skillful education or vocational training and that is a huge huge problem the way i see it and if you could see even the 20900 students 12900 are students comma 5860 this is a breakdown so since the knowledge was and the learning was the criteria i thought i highlight this because without solving this problem we cannot take sri lanka forward this resulting in such a situation the level of education at the workplace so the 8.2 million our workers only 1.7 which is 21% has gc a level above which means 79% of our workforce are less than a level qualified and that level of skills and education cannot take sri lanka to be a competitive workforce so that is a huge problem i feel we need at least four to five big universities to brought to sri lanka to cater for local and maybe international students make sri lanka education hub addition to that we need a high level vocational training centers such as tafe in australia or wet in switzerland where everybody has an opportunity to get education at all levels so at the moment so 8% university level 92% are not having proper vocational training is a huge challenge so i think the new administration should think about this and make this a reality entrepreneurship is misunderstood in asia entrepreneurial literacy is very important entrepreneurial literacy under this we always talk about financial literacy communication literacy information literacy and also service and social literacy now what happen as that if you don't have literacy level our people cannot be entrepreneurs so we need to focus about developing uh, entrepreneurial literacy in sri lanka the second is we need to develop sme culture encourage and incentive startup and third is investor pitch that means you have an idea how to get an investor and how to pitch an international investor is a, is, a, is a technique which i normally teach in universities which is very key so there are a lot of bright sri lankans you know sri lankans are so talented sri lankans are so bright and wherever i go i see so much talent but we need to create this opportunity for them and those ideas to get big money big investors we need to learn how you pitch an investor so as academics and as teachers and and politicians we have to make sure the entrepreneurial sri lanka and semi culture is given a priority i like to discuss the singapore ua uh, models as a knowledge based leadership as is best i believe um, they have mastered the knowledge based leadership then what they've done they develop a place called spring which is sri lanka singapore standard product and innovation uh, board what they did is they separated enterprise development enterprise promotion enterprise capabilities quality standards they segment all the potential and high attractive businesses then they what they did they brought technology science technology and innovation parallel to those industries they identify for them to make the singapore today and then they brought standard councils to make sure that standards are met and that was built so standard councils were built so basically what they did they did the product activity councils and and then science technology innovation came and standard councils together they brought singapore's competitiveness to this level and that's a model many countries are studying and that's the success of retail or many manufacturing most of the industries of singapore based on this model they didn't stop there they also used singapore's secret formula which is mph formula 
only the best right people run the country and the institution p pragmatism and appreciation of solution who is the best for the job without having fixed ideas they say that whether cat or black or white so long they cat the mice is fine with us and so socialist or capitalist policies were not matter so long it delivered and last is the honesty to build corrupt free society so mph theory was the singapore's other success story so they built all the institutions and productive institutes plus they brought this as a law then in the uae story uae spent more than 99000 dollars per child on education one of the highest in the world so they focus also on knowledge based leadership and build children and spending so much money on education today you have dubai school of government uae diplomat institute dubai knowledge village academic city paris sorbon new york university and so many institutes were brought to support the economic growth the other element of this both these countries is they develop something called the nations brand the most powerful nation brands were built by uae and singapore and that's the see other secret of these countries see what happened made in sri lanka or sri lankans has to have price in the world when you are poor in nation brand and that means we don't get our export we don't get good money or the price for our labor so the nation brand strategy is very powerful and i must say there's something a game changer for sri lanka why brand a country a globalized world in which we now live every place has to compete with every other for share of mind share of income share of talent and share of voice so therefore this and brand is a competitive weaponry for a country to compete in the marketplace the theory is nation brand is a vital component and is a key driver of nation's economic vitality so without focusing on a nation brand a country cannot reach its economic vitality is, is argument and therefore all the country that include china include uh, switzerland uh, singapore uae they are very focused on nation brand status nation brand was first brought to dubai by gentleman called emperor is an oxford professor he is considered as one of the best in the world and he was the mastermind of singapore uh, brand uh, evolution in fact he wrote a book and i also co-wrote a book with him he's my uh, nation brand guru and i think i owe so much to him what is the nation brand is is this a hexagon it has six pillars middle of a nation brand is is leader so as the leadership of the country change the nation brand perception change the very first one is the governance public opinion about nation government perceived and commitment to global issues that's the the way world see it the second is culture global perception of each nation's heritage and appreciation of its contemporary culture then the people their education their competence and their tolerance if you know uae set up minister of tolerance and year 2019 is year of tolerance in uae because they found out uh, that the people pillar were not performing very well and they done such an initiative so we are ministry of tolerance in uae now then comes tourism the level of interest in visiting a country which sri lanka obviously is a very high on that pillar and then immigration investment the power to attract people to live uh, or work on a country so because of these six pillars as sri lanka nation brand we have to manage them we have to strategize them otherwise it won't just happen it's very clear higher the your focus about education the higher the country's economic growth i once again i would like to say that we have a president that hopefully will do this change and let's all of us work together and uh, thank you very much for listening thank you thank you His Excellency Mahinda Rajapaksa 
the fifth executive president of Sri Lanka just now to this uh, academics for Gota the interactive section of uh, the strengthening the education system of Sri Lanka to make a knowledge-based economy a reality we would like to invite His Excellency Mahindra Rajapaksa uh, to the podium प्रतिपत्ति प्रकाशन मैं इतना प्रतिपत्ति प्रकाशन हदंड विश्वविद्यालय आचार्य वो गुरुंगे आचार्य वो सहयोगी विश्वविद्यालय के लिए विशेष अवधान क्यों कर लगे नो मे अंक ये तुला विशेष ये संबंध है मैं इतना अनागत यदि विश्वविद्यालय वाले दिन वड़ात इलियटे ना विश्वविद्यालय उपाध्यारी मेरे राते टे आवश्य विधि राते आवश्यकता वे हाल लोके आवश्यकता वे अनु बी करांडे पुलवांग वे ही केला बालापुरतु त्यागा नंटे पुलवांग का मत ये नो उस अस्पिला समाते ना वो सियलु दे नाम विश्वविद्यालय अध्यापन ये लगा दिए हुए थे है भाई ये विश्वविद्यालय अध्यापन ये दी बड़ा त्रेकिया आवश्यक काव्य आती है ना त्रेकिया लगाकर ना पुलवां विषय ला रहा हूँ उन टे उन यमुकर भी मटा लात ये तुले विश्वविद्यालय तुलीनु ये ये टे सहायोगी दक्कांडे आवश्यक वैध पीली वाला सकस्वीय � Mama, kamu nanti lada studi wanita bimbing, betek bela, mahu bini bimbing, hit bimbing, ya nak. Nama tu atas studi wanita bimbing, bersih dan nanti menjadi lagi lapar.